Hi, everybody. It's Jessica and Dave here, your Anderson's agronomy team. Today, we are going to talk about why the R3 growth stage is so very critical in soybeans. The main reasons for this is uh, it's the perfect time to apply fungicide, insecticide, foliar fertilizers, and lastly, we'll go over how to grow stage soybeans. It's all about stress and the reduction of. Correct. Yeah, we do not want any stress during this R3, R4 time. And the reason being is because it's the soybean plant is determining its yield to finish out the season at harvest. Yeah, unlike corn, where corn's usually in July is when it's really determining yield, uh, soybeans are in August. That's why they always say August rains make soybeans. Right. And the main way that we are going to reduce that stress is firstly going to be with a fungicide. And we want to apply at the R3 growth stage because it's early enough for preventative control, but you aren't to the point yet where you're working on corrective action. Yeah, and we're kind of walking a tightrope here. We want, like Jess says, we we have to get on before the disease takes hold, right? But we also want to wait long enough so uh, the fungicide will protect the plant all the way through R6. R6 is kind of the magic point of when the crop's done and we're just drying down by then. And if you do application any earlier than R3, then you won't have that control all the way through the R6 growth stage. Yeah. And, and stress is, again, stress is key. I can't stress that enough, Jess. And we like to compare this to deficiencies. So if you wait until a disease is already present and you're working on corrective action, then your yield has already been impacted. Similar to deficiencies, if you have symptoms already showing, then you've already impacted yield. But if you work in the preventative action, then you'll be able to protect the yield uh, for that soybean plant to finish out through harvest. Yeah, insecticides the same way. We have to get that on prior to an infestation right? just so we can protect that yield. Once any defoliation occurs from insect damage, you have a significant impact on yield already. So to minimize that, an insecticide is imperative. So uh, the next thing is our foliar fertilizer. Um, again, the soybeans are really using up a lot of nutrients at this R3, R4 stage. The main thing that I like to note uh, going into this growth stage is the heightened need for nitrogen and potassium. I always like to take a look at those nodules. At this time in the growing season, if you pull up some of those roots and you see those little round balls on the root system, if you open one up, um, if a nodule is fixing nitrogen for that soybean plant, it'll be like a nice medium rare steak. If it's no longer functioning, it's gray. As we head into this time of the season, they're most likely going to be gray. Yeah, the the nodules will produce about 80% of the soybean needs, but they still have that other 20% that, that needs, uh, needs to scavenge from the soil or from the environment. Soybeans actually take more nitrogen than corn. A lot of people don't realize that. And we also don't want that soybean plant during grain fill to be scavenging from itself. Um, yeah, you, cannibalization is never good with any species. You're weakening the plant. It's it's just not a good situation no, overall. It's not. So supplementing that additional nutrient, those additional nutrients, will help prevent that from happening and give that crop everything it needs to um, finish out the season. And we talked about stress too. If that crop doesn't have the nutrients it needs, that's an added stressor to the plant where it's not going to perform and yield. Yeah, and we keep saying this R3, R4 stage, Jess. So maybe we should talk about how to stage these plants. That's a really good point too. Um, I want to start at the R2 growth stage Mm -hmm. and then finish it out. Uh, The R2 is when you're at that full flower and we're going to determine full flower by picking up that plant and counting about four nodes down. Yeah, because the soybean plant's a little little crazy. It can be uh, flowering, producing soybeans all throughout its uh, reproductive stage. And so you'll have full set soybeans on the bottom of the plant and the top of the plant will still be flowering. And And I think that's what's difficult about staging them. It's important to note too why is because in the Midwest in this... um, more northern growing areas, we use indeterminate soybeans. So they continue to flower and grow vegetatively um, throughout the entire season compared to down south. Um, Once they start flowering, they stop growing vegetatively. Um, In the north, it helps us have larger, fuller, more producing soybean plants for our our climate. Yeah, so what we want to do is we want to take, uh, we want to count down four nodes. And at that node is where we're going to be determining the stage of the plant. And as Jess says, uh, full flower is R2. The next stage is R3. And that's when a pod is developing on that 
fourth node from the top, and it's a quarter of an inch long. And then the next stage is our four. Yep. And if we look at that same pod, it's going to be about three quarters inch long. Yeah. And so as long as those pods are developing all the way throughout three quarters to an inch, we're in the prime stage of uh, when, we, when we're going to see the best benefit from a foliar fertilizer application. And the reason I mentioned R2 even to begin with is so you can prepare yourself going out into a field to know that you're approaching R3 yeah, for that Yeah, you're going to have to be spot. about one to two weeks right. away. And again, we wanted to cover the fungicide, insecticide, and foliar because overall, if we have a healthy plant at this time, then it will be better able to defend against diseases naturally and then recover from insects if there was any damage. Yeah, because even if you put a fungicide or insecticide on, and you already have damage, it's not going to repair it. You have to have a little bit of a boost to repair that. Right. So that's all we have for you today. If you have any questions about anything we talked about today, feel free to reach out to your Anderson's representative. You can visit andersonsplantnutrient.com or Anderson's Plant Nutrient slash agriculture on Facebook. Thank you.